Yeah, okay. Apologies for that. Uh, the good Dr. Pendragon has insisted on doing the, uh, the opening titles for this one. Don't know why. Um, it's all right. This is Imagine the Aspire. This is fun with film. And this is Rosinal Batch 2. The first batch, as we saw on the How to Test Film, failed. How to Test Film? How to Test Developer? Failed. Uh, so I made up another batch last Sunday, uh, a slightly different recipe, which might appear there or might appear in the, you know, some, it'll appear somewhere. It's it's quite quite a bit strong. There's a lot more paracetamol in it and there's a lot more drain cleaner in it. But anyway, there we are. That might be showing up as slightly purpley, well, pinky browny colour. I can't tell. Um, it certainly is a sort of pinky browny colour and it certainly works. So we're going to take this down to the dark room. Well, I'm not going to take this down to the dark room. I'm going to take a film down to the dark room. We're going to put it in a tank. We're going to develop it. I'm not going to show that. Uh, and then we'll look at the results. So you get to see a film being loaded in the dark. Okay, uh, this is something I haven't seen on the internet. This is where you're actually going to see a live film put into a developing tank. It's going to be quite exciting because... Um, <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. You probably will be able to see what I'm doing. But it's also going to show whether or not this ancient FP, HP5 is actually sensitive to uh, infrared. The first thing we're going to do is, which you can't see because I've got to hold it right up to my face and all the I can see it, is just trim off the leader and taper that. Make it easier to go on the spool. Okay, that's the tank open, that's the spool, that's the centre column. I'm going to get the film from there, from there, onto there, into there. I'll put that that side. All in utter and total blackness. If I turn the reds out now, I can't see a thing. But you can. I'll turn them back on again for a moment. Right. Okay. Just needed to make sure that I could uh, find the bits that I needed to find. And the film goes into the top slot of the reel like so. And I can guide the cassettes with ring finger and little finger. There's light coming in behind me. It's a lot of light in here actually. The advantage is that this film expired in about 1990 at the latest. It's probably lost quite a bit of its sensitivity. And there we are. And this was a, um, a home load. So all I have to do is find the tape. horrible feeling it's going to look dreadful but as I can't see what I'm doing it doesn't matter there's the pot on the centre column right down to the bottom there's the lid on one clip lid secure Put that on. There's something going on my arm. I wonder where that's coming from. Okay, that's it done. I can turn the reds back on. Does it make a lot of difference for you, but it makes a heck of a difference for me. Oh, we actually tore that film. I'm going to go away and develop this. There's lots of videos of people developing on the internet. It's the most, you know, you, you sit there 15 minutes of video of someone doing that. It's the most boring thing on earth. So we'll come back to this when the negative's done, when they're dry, and when we can possibly put them inside the big beastie. Hope that's in shot. Or one of the little beasties, or scan them or something. 
Well, yeah, I've been smashing around with the daylight tank and the homemade parodinal and fixer and water and stuff like that and made a mess. Uh, even had time to change my shirt <laughs> because it's now two days later. And we've got these and I've been scanning them. A little bit of history behind this because it's a bit odd. The film is HP5. That is HP5, not HP5+. Plus. Now, they stopped producing HP5 in about 1990. Might have been a bit before, might have been 89, 89, 90, sometime around then. Might have been as late as 92, I can't remember exactly. Uh, chances are this film could have expired 30 years ago. <laughs> Certainly looks like it. It's, um, yeah, there's some base fog on it, which you, you, of course you can't see. Uh, it's lightly, uh, lightly based fog, um, very lacking in contrast, quite exceedingly grainy, uh, even more so than HP5 was when it was new. And flat, it's, it's, it's well past its sell by date. Now, I have printed one of these under the enlarger, so they're still printable. They're still optically printable, which is quite surprising. You don't have to scan them. It's just as well because the scans are filthy. That's what happens when you use 30 year old film. You get, you know, it's hairs all over and there's holes in the emulsion. It's quite exciting. But I've got miles of this stuff. I bought it on eBay and it was cheap and I bought it because it's going to be useful to you. It would be light sensitive. It would be, you can do something with it. And I tested one and developed that with HC 110, with the, the Kodak stuff we looked at the other day, which I know to be good. And this just lacks density slightly compared with the HC 110. So with suitable adjustment of the time on the parodinol, it will perform well. I'm haven't got uh, another f a, a decent film a fresh film ready yet but I am tempted when I finish the one in the rangefinder my Yashica I am tempted to stand to develop it in the parodinal I might not be brave enough we'll see later in the meantime here are some images from here <laughs> 